Hey there, Ron's Bass Lessons back again with uh, another request song. This is The Weight, and the version that was requested was the Jeff Healy version. And it's, uh, it's essentially the same as the original, except it's, in a, it's a step down. The original one on the recording's in A, this one's in G. And also it's not as, it's not as required to be as busy. The original bass line is pretty busy. Um, a lot of uh, 16th notes and whatnot. Um, surprisingly, the bass player is way busier than you would think he needs to be. And I guess if you're not listening to it on a stereo, that really brings that out. You might, I've never no noticed it really when I was like listening in the car or whatever. I guess my system didn't bring it out. But when I took a closer look at it, I was like, wow, he's pretty busy. So what I did was I took what I think is pretty much going on, which is a laid back, more laid back version, but then I... I added in, I think, some of the original um, feel just because I thought it was like appropriate and different. So you can play it real simple and I'll show you that or you can add in some of the more passing tones and whatnot, which I think to me just makes it more interesting and fun to play, but of course that's your call. So, <clears throat> so the intro, unlike the original record, hangs on the root chord. Um, for a couple of measures. So Jeff Healy does a little guitar thing um, instead of the acoustic thing from the original and then you just hang on G for a couple of couple of measures. You know, just waiting for, for the vocals to start. Instead of on the, on the original, it would just go right into the vocals after the acoustic intro and then the chords would start changing immediately. So um, I just learned this song um, to make this lesson so I'm just going to keep my notes handy it's not complicated or anything but just so I don't um, trip over something here okay so so the basic riff is going to be G C sharp D and then back to G and that finishes the round of a full uh, round of chords in the in the vocal so the basic thing is And, and I like to hit the uh, the octave of the G on the second time around. To me, it just adds some some interest. But you're welcome to go to the back to the root. Okay, you know, play it to taste. So that's your basic. Um, excuse me. That's your basic riff. Um, your basic uh, uh, root notes in the feel. So so again, it's just sort of bum 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 bum. bum. Okay, and then you can do passing tones though. And on the original record, the bass player is much more busy. I mean, he's playing pretty much sixteenth and eighth notes the whole time. So what I like to do is I like to kind of start it out like that, basic, and then sort of build it up a little bit with a few more passing tones, and then also some tones to work my way back to start the top of the next vocal line. So sort of like this. So so the first time would be just a basic. And then I'll like sort of walk my way back, okay, with uh, with like octave and major um, notes, um, which to me are major sounding, like the sixth and the major third. All right, so you're basically kind of in a G major scale if you're familiar with the scales, and you can also even even hit maybe the fifth, because all that stuff sort of sounds major. Which is, this is not a bluesy song, you know, this is a pop song. Um, so, and then, this, and then the next time around you can get a little more busy and kind of pump on the notes. Alright, and that's, I mean, that's basically just playing around with the notes. I'm hitting some open strings just to add some rhythm and like I said it's in deference to the original bass line which felt more like that the whole time. So I'll just do that slow just to give you sort of an example of the basics of what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I did tab the basics of this. I didn't tab these passing tones, but hopefully if, if I'm playing them slow enough and you can 
you don't have the distraction of the other sounds you can kind of see what I'm doing but I mean like I said it's mostly around the G major scale and I'm playing in, in third position um, on the third fret here on the top and then I'm playing mostly the second and fifth frets on the other two um, so that's when he's singing and then to, for me the most interesting line is the pre-chorus line Now again you don't have to do this but I think it adds a lot and, and, it, and it definitely stays more in deference to the original on the original um, because it was an A he was able to use open strings differently and like um, on this pre-chorus part he would come up and he would hit on the 11th fret he would hit a chord he would hit an A, an a major chord with A and C sharp you can't do that here the same way because you're playing a step down so I just hit the major third note of the G which is going to have sort of the same effect so the pre-chorus so ju just kind of first just listen and get the rhythm and then I'll show you the notes sorry So it starts on the uh, fourth fret on the bottom string, and this is catching the um, the B note, which is going to be the the um, the third of 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 the G chord. So you're kind of forming a G major chord, and then you're hitting the the G on the fifth fret on the on the second string on the next string up. So. And then you're hitting the F sharp on the fourth fret. So your first three notes are four, five, four on the bottom two strings, okay? And then you're gonna come up again. Up to the to the D on the fifth fret. And then to the C on the third fret. So I kind of look at it as two phrases in this way. This is the way I tabbed it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five notes. Okay. And then the second phrase is the open A, and then the C on the third fret, and then the um, uh, uh, the E on the second fret on the on the uh, third string, and then you're hitting the um, the G. You're basically making a C major chord. Okay. So now, if you do that with the music in time, it feels really cool. It's like you're like, wow, that's a lot of notes to play in that thing. And I did. I would not have expected that. If I wasn't listening to try to learn the song, I, I just kind of hear the chord changes, and it sounds like everything's just sort of like holding and legato. But it, but it's actually the bass player is going freaking nuts in, in comparison to the rest of the song. So, all right. So that's your that's your pre-chorus transition chord, you know, which that's when they um, take a load off Fanny and all that stuff. All right, and then. Um, so you know that what is that three or four times and 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 then it stops the last time it's and if you want to hit the octave you can slide up to the 15th fret and take that C which the bass player does do in the actual record although he's doing it um, on on uh, on the D because the song is in is in it. So um, after you so so after you do that last time, then there's the slow part. It's almost the same notes, almost, but okay. So much slower, but similar to what you just did. But so it's starting on the. Uh, 
on the D string on the fifth fret, five, four, two, and then coming up to the A on the fifth. And then open three. And then open three, three. So, so kind of, you got to kind of cop the timing of that again. So it's. It's, it's kind of amazing, unexpected, cool timing and syncopation in this song. So one, one, one more time. Five, four, two, five, open three, open three, three. All right? And that's all the parts. Um, in the Jeff Healy, in the Jeff Healy version, I think after the fourth or the fifth verse, the second to last verse, they do that twice in a row. He does a quick solo over that. Thing we that the thing I just showed you the post chorus. So you do that twice in a row, which normally the rest of the song you're only doing it once. And then the song ends on that part as well, although they shorten it. You kind of just have to listen to it. I th I think it goes like. You know something like that. It, it just pauses on the C and then to see a couple of times and that's how the song ends but you know you'll hear it if you play it with the record but that's all the parts um i have it as usual i have it uh i also have a, i'll have a version of me playing along with the whole song um so you can watch the hand and listen to the phrasing i tried to get the bass up high enough so you could easily hear what i'm playing um you know so you're not struggling to hear it over the record if there's a problem let me know i'll re-record that video but um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the subscriptions. I've been getting, you know, lots of regular subscriptions. Um, just, ju just a reminder, you know, I do custom bass lessons. There's a small fee because it takes a lot of time to record a video, to tab it out, post a video, and wh wh whatever. But I'm happy to answer any questions for free that I can answer. If I have a tab for something that's not out there, I'm happy to send it. No charge for any of that. It just takes a lot of time to make a video. So, again, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.